Hey what is up guys, Total War Chaos here. In today's video, I'll be talking about whether Mountain Blade Warband is still worth it in 2020, even with the upcoming release of the new Banner Lord. So without further ado, let's get right into it. General Gameplay If you are a fan of medieval role-playing open world games, this will give you the biggest dopamine rush you will ever experience in your life. As we know, this game is 10 years old, however, the gameplay itself easily makes up for it. You essentially wander around the medieval land recruiting soldiers, mercenaries, and conquer land whilst building up your renown. And its character progression is a big part of the game. Whenever you level up, you can increase the skill to your liking. Whether you're into horse archery, throwing javelins, or wanting to master the pole arms, and all the way to wanting to be a medical or tactical expert on the field. Not only this, you can decide the direction of how you want to progress. You can be a bandit that raid and plunder villages for loot and kill poor farmers for a laugh, or join a faction and fight for their cause, or be a mercenary and find jobs from various of characters, to starting your own kingdom and attempting to establish your own role. You can even select a more peaceful path by being a trader that buy and resell goods and eventually start your own enterprise. Possibilities are quite limitless in Mountain Blade Warband. Combat The combat itself is quite satisfying, whether it be a headshot with the bow from a mile away, to blocking consecutive strikes from the enemies during a melee encounter, to crouch lancing your enemies decimating them from their horseback. And if the combat ever becomes too easy, you can ramp up the difficulty in the menu settings to what I call hardcore mode where everything will pretty much one-shot you, especially a javelin to the face, and playing with your units becomes more important, unless you're a filthy sweaty and night spammer where you charge into every battle and auto-win. Replayability There are currently three DLCs up for purchase, with one that I highly encourage you to try, which is the Laponionic Wars. Although it is multiplayer only, you will have a blast playing the DLC. You can be a drummer in the midst of the battle, boosting your teammates' morale and reload speed, and even play with a fellow flutist together, or to playing your standard infantry unit with a musket that takes quite a long time to reload. You can even sign up to a group that participates in line battle events, where there are 200 real players battling it out against each other, with a commander commanding a group of players varying from 10 to 30 or more. There will be cavalry, riflemen, artillery, and of course the line infantry. Although most line battle events are in Laponionic War DLC, you may find some for the original warband as well, but eventually this may become a bit of a chore as once you sign up to a group, they may want you to attend training sessions and regular attendance to line battles so that you can promote and not get kicked out. Let's talk about single player replayability. If you don't know already, there are tons of mods out there, so many that you can probably spend an extra 500 to 1000 hours playing these mods alone. Whether it would be Sengoku Japanese Medieval Period, the Laponionic Wars are all the way to the other side of the spectrum with fantasy settings like Lord of the Rings and the Third Age of Middle-earth. You will eventually find one to your liking. Although the battle size is limited to 150 units on the field at any given time, there is a battle size mod that can extend the limit to 1000 units, which will most likely crash the game if it ever happens for most players, but having the limit extended to somewhere around 500 makes the battle more immersive and enjoyable, like a true battlefield. I would compare this game on the same level as something like Kingdom Come Deliverance in terms of level of enjoyment out of a medieval RPG, but nothing out there in the current market that can really compare to Mountain Blade Wallbound in terms of actual gameplay. Overall, I would honestly give this game a solid 10 out of 10, considering this game is 10 years old. As the game can be very challenging at times, with a lot of unit variety, it has a strong character progression, it's open world, and you pretty much decide your own story and how to go about it. Graphics can pretty much be ignored once you start getting into the game. There are also endless of total conversion mods, meaning extremely high replayability and combat itself is very satisfying. Oh and not to forget, the game is literally 2 euros on some websites right now. However, there is one negative thing about the game, it would be that it got boring after thousands of hours playing. Really that's the only downside I can think of. And that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to like if it helped you decide whether to purchase this game or not, and subscribe for the upcoming Balan Lord content when it releases. And if I left anything out, feel free to comment. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.